Hello everyone, it's Andrea, and today I thought I would share with you the makeup routine, the everyday makeup that I've been loving so far for the past week. I loved it so much, I can't stop wearing it. So I thought I would share with you. It's quite a contrast from the makeup look that I was gravitating towards back in May. As I mentioned in my May Favorites video, I was really into this fuller coverage foundation by Pure because I was dealing with some breakouts and I just was really craving that extra coverage. This week, I feel like I'm craving the complete opposite of that. I've just been into very sheer textures, makeup that you can't really see sitting on the skin. It just kind of seamlessly blending in my natural skin texture showing through and just embracing that summer glow. And I'm excited to share with you. So I already prepped my skin. I did my skincare routine. I do have sunscreen on. I am using the Polish Choice. The, this always has such a long, long name and I always have to go to read it to make sure I'm saying the right thing. It's the Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid Broad Spectrum SPF 50. This is one of my favorite sunscreens to wear under makeup. It performs really well under a variety of bases. And I am planning on doing a little post on my Instagram and on my website just with my top favorite sunscreens because I do get asked about sunscreens a lot on, in DMs and people want to know what my favorites are and this is definitely in my top five. So spoiler alert, this is one of them. This works for me pretty consistently. I can use this in the winter, I can use this in the summer. It's not too greasy. When I use this in the summertime, since I am more combination oily, I don't use a moisturizer underneath. I find this hydrating enough for me. So in the winter time, I do use a moisturizer underneath. So just so you know. All right, enough rambling. Now let's start putting on some makeup. So this is the Trini London BFF Serum. I have this in a shade Binky and I love this. This is like a step up in coverage from the Chanel water tint, but it's not quite as much coverage as some tinted moisturizers that I've tried in the past. This is less coverage than something like the NARS tinted moisturizer or the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, but it has more coverage than the Chanel water tint. But just like the Chanel water tint, it has this extra smoothing capability. Like it just gives a beautiful smoothing effect. So I just take one pump and I like to kind of move it around and then I just start applying it with fingers. Fingers is my favorite method of application for this product. With a brush I find that it gets, like the brush doesn't really work it into the skin as nicely and if I use a sponge then I lose some of the coverage. So for me I've just been using it how I normally use the Chanel water tint. It has a bit more moisture to it. The Chanel water tint is literally like 75% water. So that one's more of like a lightweight water-based um, texture. This does have some more emollient quality to it. It's a bit more moisturizing. Um, I do find that I get a bit more glowy with this than I do with the Chanel water tint, but if I just blot, so I can, I can wear this all day, if I just blot as needed, if I start having some oil breakthroughs, it still looks good after I blot the oil away. It doesn't look all weird and patchy. It doesn't settle into my lines or my pores. It really wears nicely throughout the day because I do get quite oily in my T-zone, especially this time of year. But as you can see, this is just with one pump. It's not perfect, but it's like my skin, but better just evened out my skin tone just a bit. It is fragranced. It's a really pleasant fragrance, but I know that some people don't like fragranced uh, based products, so just, just so you know. But I really like the fragrance. It's a, it's a soft floral, but not overpowering in any way. It's like a fresh, soft, fresh floral <laughs> type of scent. I'm going to take just another pump just to show how you can build it. So I'd say this is more coverage than um, the Glossier skin tint. The Glossier skin tint does not work for me at all. That one just kind of makes me look like a hot mess. It slips and slides and it's not, it's just not flattering on my skin. It doesn't work for me. But I do know people with dry skin that love it. 
this seems to be pretty universally enjoyable. I know people with oily skin that like this. I know people with dry skin that like this. Alana Davison did a get ready with me and she has quite dry skin and she used this and it looks so beautiful on her skin as well. So I think this is a pretty uh, low risk base product. I think anybody could, could enjoy it really. And as you can see, it just, it still looks like my skin. Definitely like this more than the It Cosmetic CC Cream. Uh, that stuff does not work for me at all. It makes me super, super greasy, and I do find that a bit too heavy. This is the base that I've been really, really into. And then if I do have, you know, some blemishes, some spots that I would like to address, I take my trusty Old Faithful NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer with a dense, fluffy brush. And I just gently buff this over any areas of concern. The NARS concealer just effortlessly blends into the texture of the Trini London Serum. So once we're nice and concealed on the face, I go in with my under eye corrector. Still loving the Sicily corrector. I know it's pricey, but one tube, even with daily use, lasts me over a year. This is another one of those products that looks really good in real life. You can't see, you can't see it on the skin up close. It doesn't accentuate skin texture. It just does the job. It just corrects some of the discoloration I have under my eyes. Had to close the blinds behind me because the sun is starting to come out and one of the joys of filming in natural daylight is kind of constantly trying to compensate for, for the sun going in and out, but should be good for now. I'm going to do some concealing, and this is another one of my favorite products that looks really good in real life. It doesn't really look like I have makeup on, but it does offer a bit of extra coverage where I need it. It's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I use this in shade 4.5, and I'm just focusing this on the areas where I want like a tiny little bit of brightening, brightening, tiny little bit of brightening. This brush has been so amazing for under eye concealer. This is a NARS brush. This is the NARS, I think, it, I think they call it the Radiant Concealer Brush. Kind of like the same as using an eyeshadow brush. And it looks really, really nice and, and refined. Then for blending it out on the rest of my face, I'm just going back in with my other concealer brush. This is a Zoeva 142 brush. It's very similar to the Sephora 57. The other day I was on Twitter, somebody was mentioning how their friend works as, their, their friend who is a comedian also has a job writing the jokes of a Peloton instructor and that's like an inside behind the curtain insiders piece of information that just really made me laugh. Even something as natural seeming as the personality of a Peloton instructor, there's just so much, even if something seems effortless, behind the scenes there's so much that goes on behind it that we may, we may not even know. And it, this is a very popular Peloton instructor. His name is Cody. His XOXO rides are my favorite. They're, he like, it's like Peloton hit cardio on the bike mixed with life advice. And he's very funny. Um, it's very like silly conversational humor. And I mean, finding out that those jokes are written by a professional comedian, it doesn't really surprise me, but it did make me laugh. Like, man, things never really are what they seem. I'm going to do a little bit of powder. I'm just going to powder my under eyes with my trusty Old Faithful Pat McGrath under eye powder. Still love it, still recommend it. And then I'm not powdering the tops of my cheeks because I'll be using some cream products, but I am taking a little bit of powder, my By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder, and I'm just powdering my T-zone I'm going to go in with my Clarins bronzer. This is the Clarins SOS Primer 
in shade 06 bronze and I'm just kind of using this on the perimeter of my face to warm up my complexion. For a blush, I'm taking this NARS Air Matte blush in the shade Gasp. This color is so, so good for summer. It's an incredible bronzer blush type of shade. So if you're somebody that's afraid of having too much color on your cheeks, you don't want to do anything that's too peachy, that's too orange, that's too red, that's too pink, but you want maybe a little something, this is a really nice kind of like an entry level blush if you usually normally just use bronzer. So this is great. This formula is really interesting. Um, this was sent to me by NARS, by the way. It's not what I thought it would be. It's, it's a lot more lightweight and whipped than I thought it would be. So I just take my e.l.f. stipple brush, I dip it in the pot, and then I kind of go over it on the palm of my hand. Very gentle, rusty, like terracotta bronze type of shade. It's like a slightly darker version of the Hermes Rose Tan. So again, I just do stippling motions because if I swipe, if I brush too hard, I can disturb the makeup that I have underneath and I don't want that. So just using a gentle, gentle hand. And this lasts a decent amount of time. I do like to layer it with the Hermes blush or any powder blush for more longevity. If you do, if you need your face makeup to last a long time, creams alone, especially if you have oilier skin, creams alone won't take you there. You're going to have to mix cream and powder together to get that maximum lasting power. Then whatever I have left over on my brush, I just kind of tap it a little bit on the bridge of my nose to kind of give me some natural sun-kissed vibes and then also on my brow bone kind of towards like the outside of my eye again to just kind of give me a little bit of natural definition there i'm using tom ford absinian this is a cream shadow that is very long wearing and i'm just sloppily applying this to my eyelid You do have to work fast with this product because it sets quickly. It doesn't set as quickly as Violette FR cream shadow. That's like a whole different animal, but I would recommend just working one eye at a time with this product. I'm taking a, a little bit of it on my lower lash line as well. Such a good shade. I definitely featured it in my one and done eyeshadows video. There's this TikTok makeup hack video that was very very popular that recommended putting an illuminating concealer just on the outside of the eye to give a more lifted eye look and this product is so perfect for that this is an oldie but a goodie this is the YSL Touche Claw mine is like in a limited edition leopard print packaging but this is an excellent product if you want to try that trick because it gives subtle illumination without adding the bulk because i mean i don't i don't need any coverage in this area right i don't have any discoloration my dark circles don't go out to here i just need a little bit of brightening and something like this is perfect for that because it just gives you brightening with a really subtle lightweight texture it will just really really easily melt in. And then I just take either my dense concealer brush or my soft concealer brush. And I like to do the step after my eyeshadow because if I do have, if I went a bit too low with my eyeshadow, I can correct it with this. Then I can always go back in with my little blush brush if I feel like I need to soften any edges. But ultimately, the effect is very subtle, but you do get that slight lift. You won't see it in real life. You don't, you don't actually see any product sitting on top of the skin. It just looks like your, your eyes are naturally brighter there. I'm gonna do just a tiny little bit of eyeliner just to thicken my lash line a little bit. This is such a great eyeliner pencil that I don't think I ever hear anybody talk about, but it's the Charlotte Tilbury Powder Pencil. This 
looks like you're using eyeshadow on the lash line. It's just, it's so easy to smoke out. And it's a really beautiful color. It's the classic eye powder pencil. It's it's dark, but it's not as harsh as like an inky black gel liner. It just gives me the perfect amount of subtle smoky definition at the lash line. It's just so easy to smoke out because it's just like a dry powder. It's not a gel, so you don't have to worry about it setting. Some mascara, I'm going to use my Marc Jacobs lash primer just to help me get some extra volume and then I'm using the Sicily so stretch mascara it gives me like nice natural length and it doesn't smudge which is great so as you can see it's still very much natural like my natural skin texture nice and blended and, and quite seamless in in real life. Blot any excess lip balm for my lips and go in with my lip liner. This is the Jouer lip liner in the shade Fawn. It's really creamy and I like to take my MAC 219 brush to soften the edge of the lip liner. For the lipstick I'm taking Lancome Killing Me Softly and I like to just press it into the lips. Really getting it in there so that it almost stains my lips. I love this color and this formula, but oh my god, the smell. It's like a very old school floral lipstick kind of scent that... It's bearable, but I would rather it smelled like nothing or something else, to be honest. My trusty Maybelline Topaz Lifter Gloss. Another lip product with a scent that I don't love, but it's it's fine. <laughs> and that's it. If I really want to go the extra mile, I will go in with this Sicily powder. This is the Blur HD powder, and it's like that extra finishing step. It's a beautiful powder that just helps to further soften any texture. And again, it doesn't look like powder. And that's it, my friends. This is the current base routine that I can't stop doing. If I do feel like switching things up a little bit, I will switch up my blush and lip colors. I do have another variation of this look that I like to do except using my Bobbi Brown powder pink um, blush and using the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Muse gloss. Two other optional steps at the end of the look if I have a really long day or if I just want to make sure that my cheek color stays as defined as possible, I will top off the cream products with powders just to kind of really seal the deal and like I mentioned the Hermes rose tan um, blush helps me helps me do that just a really soft coat and for bronzer just whatever bronzer I have on hand in this case the Lila B bronzer that won't die just in the areas where I had applied the Clarins bronzer just to really seal the deal. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for watching this video. I really, really appreciate your support and I'll be catching you in my next one. Bye.